Vivek Ramaswamy answering questions from voters comes down on an individual about as hard as I've seen. Still respectfully, check it. It's not Hamas, it's Palestinian situation because Hamas is the organization which was started or created by Israel with the help of U.S. We had one Hitler in the history. He created the Holocaust. We have an, another wannabe Hitler in Israel who want to create another Holocaust in Middle East with the Palestinian people. Now, my question to you, where do you stand here right now on the Palestinian situation and how this can be resolved and where, what is your take on it? I hear your view, sir. And, and also one last thing is, there's one Hitler wannabe in, in um, Middle East and other is right behind him. Guess who? Wannabe Hitler, really? In this conflict with the murder of innocent Jewish babies, who do you think that Adolf Hitler would be rooting for? So let me just respond to that question. I know that there are diverse views on this question. I respectfully disagree with yours on this. I think it is wrong when we in the United States or in the UN or anybody else create a false equivalence between Israel defending its own homeland versus the behaviors of the terrorists who target Israel. So I reject the comparison, and I think I'll just speak candidly. You shared your view, I'm going to share mine. I think it is offensive to compare the current prime minister of Israel to Hitler. I think that is way off base, and I deeply disagree with that. That is wrong. Now, let me say something further. I, I, I say it without apology, Israel has the absolute right to defend its own homeland. I'm different from the, the far left that might give these criticisms of Israel. Of course, many of us in this room are. But I also want to be clear-headed about it. I absolutely stand for Israel's right to defend itself. But I also recognize the position I'm running for as President of the United States of America. And my moral obligation as the U.S. President is to American citizens. So there's a couple things I will say about that. Yes, we will stand with Israel in its right to defend its own homeland, give diplomatic air cover. Frankly, this gentleman, we don't have to be upset at him. The U.N. pretty soon is going to start to effectively say the same things. We have to tell the U.N. that that's wrong. We have to provide Israel with diplomatic support, munitions support as needed. Further, even provide them with intelligence sharing. Get to the bottom of that intelligence failure, frankly, both in the U.S. and Israel, that allowed this to happen. But we have to do it in a way that avoids broader regional conflict in the Middle East that does not advance American interest. Three trillion dollars spent in Iraq and Afghanistan. To what end? The Taliban is still in charge in Afghanistan 20 years later. Frankly, a hostile anti-American regime in Iraq that's vulnerable to Iranian incursion. That didn't advance American interest, and we have to own up to that. And there are many in the Republican Party. Some of you may have seen an interview a few nights ago with, with Hannity. It was a disaster. From, uh, you know, in terms of the lack of clarity in the neocon wing of the Republican Party that fails to admit those errors of the past that we have to learn from. So I think we've made our worst decisions in the past when we've responded emotionally to military crises or to crises of other kinds. We have to respond rationally, cool-headedly, and ask what advances the American interest. And then the one point I will make is yesterday I was at Eagle Pass in Texas on the southern border. Last Saturday, exactly a week ago from right now, I was in Pittsburgh on your northern border in New Hampshire, taking a look at the wide open border with Canada. The number one lesson we have to take away in the U.S. is if that can happen in Israel, that can happen right here at home in the United States of America. And my top job as your commander in chief when it comes to our national defense is to defend our own homeland. I love the way that Vivek kept it very respectful despite vehemently obviously disagreeing with this bigoted man. The idea that one side can slaughter 1,000 Israelis, behead 40 babies in a terrorist attack, and you call Benjamin Netanyahu a wannabe Hitler? Do you not think that these actions should lead to repercussions? 
Or should Israel just be cucks and just let it go, forget about it, it's water under the bridge? Or should they try to eradicate the cancer of Hamas, who's in its own charter has stated that their one goal is the eradication of Israel off of the earth, the Jewish people. Do you think that these people are ambivalent or neutral towards Jewish people and the only reason they don't like them is because they're Israelis? Do you see all over the world people clamoring and going after Jewish people and anybody who dares to support Israel? Are your people dead? Are you understanding? Are your people dead? Yes. Oh, good. good. Are they dead? Oh, good. I don't know which side you want to be on. And it's very difficult for me to defend Hamas or the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip simply for this reason. Because Hamas, over the last 20 years, has taught every single person under their control absolute hatred of Israel. It's rife with anti-Jewish propaganda. It is Hitler's dream come true. And yet again, they compare the Israelis to Hitler. And the problem that I see is that as Israel fights back and tries once again to eradicate this cancer and a few of the healthy cells in the body, that is the Gaza Strip, are going to be killed as well, that people are going to forget all about the murderous attacks that Black Lives Matter supported. It's difficult for me to fathom the hatred that people have of Jewish people. Why? Because they're more successful than you? Is the one thing that Jewish people can do to stop succeeding and then you'll be like most of the other races on earth rather than exceptional, rather than delivering and winning most of the Nobel Prizes, a disproportionate by far amount of them come from Ashkenazi Jews, you'll just be regular and you'll be waving your fist at the state saying, give me, give me, give me, rather than going out and achieving scientifically or in other ways. And I've been to India and I guarantee you that this man is either Pakistani or a Indian Muslim who has vented these views. And there are ethnic clashes between Hindus and Muslims and have been for a long, long time time, which is why they partitioned Pakistan and India. And when I was in Varanasi, I went into a temple that was recently, at that time, attacked and many people murdered by the Muslim sect. So don't tell me that it's this religion of peace because we've seen everything that contradicts it. They want full dominant control and to convert everybody to Islam. That is embedded within the religion. That's just the reality. That doesn't mean that all Muslims are like that. Absolutely not. But that is what the Islamists desire for the world. And that is what Hamas is. That is what ISIS is. Regardless, Vivek went at this man about as hard as I've seen him. And he showed himself to be so presidential that he can have a vehement disagreement with a person and then calmly express his own views. But Israel 100% has the right to defend itself. And I thank Vivek for sticking up for that right. And he might handle the situation differently than Trump or Biden, but that's when you decide who you think is the best fit for America and who you want to elect. I love Vivek. Thank you so much for standing on principles and standing up to this bigoted Indian Pakistani Muslim man. Peace.